and call to order this meeting the work session of Keystone Central School District, May 6, 2021. And we'll stand for the flag salute and a moment of silence. That's I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Tracy, would you do the roll call, please? Monday. Mr. Elling? Present. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Koch? Present. Ms. Lynch? Here. Mr. Miller? I'm here. Mr. Probert? Mrs. Smith? Mr. Strauss? Here. here. <laughs> Members present. I'd like to let everybody know we had the board held an executive session at 616 and it is 626 for legal reasons. Uh, we'll go to presentations. I believe Megan Hall, Laura Kitko have something with McGraw Hill Mathematics. Hello, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. 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 Okay. I'm here to um, talk about a text that we have proposed for purchase for our trig our trig class for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, so what I was asked to do was just kind of overview the process that we underwent. And um, that process actually began in the fall of 2019. Um, we came together as DPLs with Dr. Martin, and she had put together our curriculum development process grid that placed um, mathematics in the resource and professional learning. So we were tasked with evaluating our existing documents and looking at any areas where we felt we could um, maybe have some improvement in the trig was brought to my attention um, by one of our teachers as the online component had recently expired. And when we began looking into renewing that, it had expired because the text was no longer supported by the publisher. It had a copyright of 2004. So we began looking at adopting a new text and I uh, sat down with there were seven of us on the panel composed of teachers, mainly at Central Mountain High School. Um, our current Bucktail uh, staff member who has the trig class, she had it in the fall and she's out on leave here as we made our final decision. But um, we looked at three different published publishing companies, McGraw Hill, Glencoe and Pearson. We ultimately settled on the pre-calculus text from McGraw Hill that had a component of an online, um, it's called Alex. It is a supplemental purchase that will come along with the ebook purchase. And um, we sat down between March of 2020, just prior to COVID shutdown, the first batch of text came from Pearson. And then the second batch came here last fall prior to the second remote in November of 2020. So in the um, spring of 2021, we finalized and narrowed down our decision to the Blitzer text and the pre-calculus from both one from Pearson and one from McGraw Hill. The McGraw Hill um, really sold us with the layout and the format. And um, Mr. Kramer, who currently teaches our PC now, we relied on him heavily for his input in what the prerequisites are for college level uh, mathematics. And the trig course that we currently offer sets our kids up um, in several of our pathways, taking either regular trig, honors trig, and then of course, leaning towards his knowledge in what the pre 
um, requisites would be for those who do exit our high school curriculum through the Penn College. And this text um, checked all of the boxes for us with the academic vocabulary, the applications, the higher level thinking, it was all there. And the resources are available um, with purchase for any teacher who happens to have the course. So those um, subscriptions are transferable if it happens to change from year to year, what staff member it might have or how many we might need. That wasn't um, an additional concern with the purchase through McGraw-Hill. Are there any specific questions? Anything that anyone would like to know more about? I have the, it's kind of awkward in the virtual setting, but I do have the text and I understand it will be on display um, prior to the final approval for anybody who would like to leaf through it. Where will that be on display at? That will be in my office, Roger. I will be in to take a look at it. Okay. Yeah, we're planning on having that on display for anybody in the public to view for the next week up until the... Thank you, Rose, Megan. But what Rose. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if I'm back, I said um, we are planning on having that text available in my office for anybody in the public or the board to view before next week's voting meeting. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. And then I was just double checking. Is that, um, I'm not seeing Susan, where is that contract or that purchase agreement on the agenda? It's under J curriculum. Yes. Oh, that's right. We moved it. Yeah. Hi. There it is. We added a section specifically for uh, curriculum as I believe over the next several months we plan to bring you some other curriculum items and we thought it might be nice to break them out as opposed to keep them in the regular business section for you. We had hoped that this um, we could have had in place for the 2020-2021 school year but it just didn't come together that quickly so we're hoping to make sure that we can um, put this out for next fall. We got the numbers from um, registration in terms of how many seats we were looking at and we budgeted for a few extra just for scheduling purposes. And this is something that we did budget in the general fund for curricular resources, something that we've been trying to uh, fund that, that category more so than it had been funded in previous years. And um, I just wanted to say that um, I really appreciate Laura's work on this. It's the first time that she's used that process to evaluate sources, but I feel that um, it sounds like you utilize the process the way it was intended to, to be used in order to find a resource that aligns to the curriculum, not a textbook that forces the curriculum. The textbook is a resource. And um, so finding the, the best one and the right one for our, our students and our curriculum take some time and some work to uh, compare and contrast those different resources. So yeah, it was helpful. We had, um, we had, we had purchased or requested uh, three different samples and it was helpful to be able to compare and contrast And that table that we utilized. Megan has, if anybody would like to look down through some of the target items we highlighted as, you know, what sold us on this particular resource over any others. And then Laura, uh, the number of copies and the number of online licenses seems to me that you took into account the block schedule, whereas you may not need to have every child who takes calculus in that year, you really only need half the number of resources because of the block schedule. Yeah, we only allotted for classroom sets of the paper text and actually a little fewer of the actual books themselves. The tricky part was the Alex that went along with it. Um, we weren't 100% clear until we talked a little further with the um, rep and the, the sales rep through the Alex program. Just that component was the one that was a little trickier to nail down. That one we couldn't share as easily. So just wanted to point out those to couple the process for selecting resources as well as the block schedules impact on resources. Uh, is starting to come through to you. And I think that 20, was it 25,000, 27, almost $28,000 for a textbook for um, <laughs> the entire district is actually very reasonable. Yeah. yeah, that's down from what was the estimated 70 to 80 in the past, so. As, as a tangent, Mr. Strauss, it looks like on this uh, particular quote here, you'll have to sign. I don't know if there's any other co-signers necessary for this trigonometry textbook. 
No problem. Thank you, sir. Nobody got my math joke? It's like a tangent. I failed trick, okay. <laughs> Laura got it. <laughs> yeah, All right, thank you, um, Laura and Megan, for your work on this one. I got it. Yeah. And if I could just reiterate what Jackie said, um, thank you to Laura because, um, you know, among juggling everything else as a DPL this, this year, she's led this process, which is, it's time consuming work, but we want to make sure that when we purchase something, we're purchasing the right thing for our students and our teachers. And it's so important that our teachers have good resources to be able to use with students. So again, just want to reiterate what Jackie said. Thank you, Laura. Thank you to your team of math teachers. And um, we just really appreciate the time and effort that you put into it. We appreciate the opportunity and the voice here. We really had some great discussion and it took place, like I said, over a year and a half, but formal sit downs, they were about an hour and a half each that we went together. So those documents that were shared out from um, the curriculum office were very helpful to make sure we were thorough and covering all bases. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, we're not, Whenever we purchase these and stuff like that, the uh, consumables and stuff like that that go along with it, we're not going to buy like 40 million of them, are we? No, we'll buy enough to support our student enrollment numbers. Um, so what we did with this particular purchase is we looked at course requests, um, both from this year and kind of looked at our historical numbers as well and made sure that our numbers that we're requesting are in line with our, um, our enrollment trends. And so we don't want to purchase anything above and beyond, but we also want to make sure that our students do have the resources they need. So we looked at um, current enrollments, future enrollments through course selections and um, judged those, those numbers accordingly. Okay, I just don't want there to be like the boardroom filled up with, you know. <laughs> I, no, yes, we don't want that either. Um, these are precious tax dollar, taxpayer dollars that are at stake here. So we are being very cognizant and, and responsible. Um, and also, like Jackie said, the block schedule does help tremendously with these types of things because it allows for really responsible use of classroom materials. So that also helps us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. Anybody else have any questions for Megan? Laura? I, I did want to make a note, um, according to policy 108 for resources, the approval of the needs two thirds vote from the board. So it'll have to be voted on separately next week. Okay, one number two in presentations, Keystone Camp, Summer Learning Opportunity, Megan Hall and Leslie Skirtich. So I just wanted to mention that um, someone from the finance committee, and I don't remember which board member asked, it may have Randy, asked for a little bit of an overview of Keystone Camp and how we're going to use the ESSER funds. What, what is that going to look like? It's gonna definitely be funded through ESSER uh, for extended summer learning opportunities. So I had an opportunity to meet with uh, Megan, Leslie and Susan yesterday to firm up some of the details as the, the planning still continues. But um, these ladies have put together a brief slideshow to give you an overview as it stands right now. Perfect. So you get to hear me for a little bit longer here. Um, but we just wanted to take the opportunity tonight to share a little bit with you about what we have in place so far for our plans for Keystone Camp and the work that we've put in so far and just kind of where we at, are at. So like Jackie mentioned, we are planning for our Keystone Camp that we have um, shared a little bit of information about, but we wanted to take the opportunity tonight to share a little bit more. So Leslie Skirtich is also on tonight, um, and Leslie is on our agenda for next week to be um, approved as the camp coordinator for Keystone Camp. So she is going to be joining me um, with sharing some of this information tonight. So Keystone Camp, just kind of the basics. The purpose of this camp is to provide K-12 students with a safe and fun learning environment for several weeks over the summer in order to maintain some of that educational consistency for our students. We really want to focus this camp on educating the entire child. So not only are we going to have the academic instruction, but we're also going to have the social emotional learning component built into the camp for K-12 students. because. Um, this camp was put into place in order to sort of address those needs that are COVID related, but we know that not only do we have academic needs, 
but we also have those social emotional needs um, that are so important to our students overall well-being. So for Keystone Camp, we are going to provide transportation to all of our students. And we are also going to provide a free breakfast and a free lunch to all students who will be attending Keystone Camp. So if families are interested and students are interested in attending, they will not have to provide any transportation and they will not have to provide breakfast or lunch, which I think is um, going to serve our students and our families very well. Camp will run from July 12th to August 12th. So we have about that month of instructional time there. We are going to be meeting Monday through Thursday weekly during that time. So it'll be a four day week. And then our time frame for student day is about eight to 15 to 12 o'clock. Um, we are going to be working on an application process and that application process is going to be shared out with our families and our students tomorrow, which is May 7th. So we are going to be um, operating under an application process rather than a first come first serve process. So what we're hoping to do is have applications due on May 21st, which gives our families two weeks to fill out the application, review our materials um, and submit their application. During that time, we are already starting to collect data on all of our students who are um, identify learning support students who don't qualify for extended school year. And we are looking specifically at our tier three students. So we've talked a lot about those um, tiers of support through the MTSS process in, in prior presentations. And so what we're looking at are those tier three students and those learning support students. We are going to specifically reach out to those families of those students and make sure that they know about this opportunity within the next two weeks during that application window, because we wanna make sure that we um, specifically invite them and make sure that we know that we are kind of targeting those students who we know are academically at risk, but those aren't the only students that um, will be um, permitted to come to Keystone Camp. We just wanna make sure that we extend that personal invitation to those students. So that application window will be open for about two weeks. And after May 21st, we will review applications and determine how many students we can accept into the camp. Um, and we're hopeful that we can accept as many as our staffing will allow and our capacity will allow. But I think we are hoping for really good responses based on the feedback that we've received so far. So Leslie's gonna talk a little bit about what the K to eight program will look like as well as the nine to 12 program. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so our K to eight yeah. students, is there a question? Nope, you're good. Okay, our K to eight students will attend either Rob or Renova Elementary based on their homeschool. And our tentative schedule is as follows, they'll arrive about 8.15. And as um, Mrs. Hall said, they'll all have free breakfast. And then we're going to um, do what we call mindful morning, which is where they'll get that social emotional lesson. Um, we'll also have the students setting goals for the days and for the week. And then um, between 8.45 and 11.30, we will do stations of STEM, ELA and math activities um, with the emphasis on, we want it to be learning, but we also want it to be fun sort of to think of as um, the students will be having so much fun learning that they won't even realize they're learning. And then um, at 11.30, they'll have lunch and free play. You know, hopefully we can get them outdoors if it's nice. And then they'll, they'll be dismissed at 12 o'clock. And so, um, you know, they'll either ride the buses home if they need that transportation or the parent pickup. And then grades nine through 12, these students will be um, based there based on the need for credit recovery. And one of the things that Mrs. Hall didn't mention was um, they will not be done through an application process. They will be invited um, based on the needs that the student has. She's moving ahead a little bit. And um, like I said, the focus will be on credit recovery. They'll have a very similar schedule, except for the hours of 8.45 to 11.30, they'll be working through the virtual academy for those credit recovery options. And we hope to have um, teachers on site to help with any, um, any questions that the students might have or any additional support that they might need. Now Mrs. Hall is gonna to talk to you about staffing. 
So we have posted through our frontline system the postings for our instructional staff. So we are running this through our community ed program. So our Keystone Camp instructors do not necessarily need to be certified teachers. Um, and we have drawn an excellent candidate pool. Um, as of today, I think we had about 41 applicants to be Keystone Camp instructors. And so last week we had the opportunity to have the job fair um, at Central Mountain High School last, I think it was last Wednesday. And we had a phenomenal turnout at that job fair. And one of the best things that came out of that was just the plethora of um, individuals who were interested in being Keystone Camp instructors. So our applicant pool right now is a mix of our own teaching staff, our own support staff, as well as Lock Haven student teachers, um, and even some teachers from surrounding school districts who um, are just interested in working our Keystone Camp. So we are very confident that we are going to be able to staff this appropriately, which will increase the number of students that we can serve. So originally that was just a little bit of a concern that we had, but it is turning out that we have staff and the more staff we have, the more students we can have and that's the goal. So that staffing part is, is, is working out well. Um, so at this point, um, there's a lot of information, but also there's a lot of planning left to do. And so we just wanted tonight to share with you the, the kind of basic outline that we have and share with you that the application process will begin starting tomorrow. That information will be shared with parents kind of in an information blitz tomorrow afternoon. And so we'll be accepting those applications through the 21st. So we're planning on press releases, we're planning on social media releases, um, we're planning on sharing all this information with all of our students, all of our parents district wide, as well as sharing it with community outlets to get the word out. So does anybody have any questions? You probably already mentioned it, but, uh, and I, I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, what is the target enrollment for uh, the elementary and the, uh, the high school? Originally, um, when we had started planning, Jackie, Susan, and I started, um, we were targeting about 450 students, and that was with about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Susan or Jackie, I think with about 30 staff. Um, so we are planning to target as many students as possible with the staff members that we can get. So with these about 40 some applicants, we're hoping to hire as many of those as we can, and then be able to increase our student enrollment numbers. So you're looking at somewhere around a, a 11 to one staff to student ratio or student to staff ratio? Maybe a little bit higher, maybe closer to 15 to one, um, depending on the grade level. Um, obviously our, our K one twos, we'd probably like to keep a little bit smaller, but if we have the student interest and the family interest, we certainly want to do everything we can to avoid turning them away. Uh, Maggie, do you foresee, uh, I guess my question, I'm not sure if the question is directed at you. I guess the question is, if we always participate in summer pro rec program at the different, different community parks, and I'm wondering, are we still going to do this on top of the program that we're talking about now? Yes. Okay. yes. yes. Summer park program starts immediately after school's out right. and runs for a period of time. And then this, we need that break. Okay, so we're not interfering with that. There, I think there's a little bit of overlap, but not yeah. much. We, we gave June and a little bit of July as a break. And gotcha. the playgrounds are open in the afternoon as well. Yes. So students that come in the morning still have access to the playgrounds in the sure. afternoon. And then my other question, Megan, here again, it's really not directed at you, but it involves with your program. It's more to Susan and Rob. Would there be any issues that we're going to be using more energy, which could in turn affect our contract with McClure, on our energy usage should not be the okay double, oh, double yeah, should not be because we were planning to run the air conditioning through the summer anyway yeah. to control oh, okay. mold issues that's right okay. um, no. but we are actually um, <laughs> creating a schedule leslie part of leslie's responsibility will be to um, get in touch with our custodial um, supervisors to make sure they know what areas of the buildings that we'll be using during what week so it doesn't impact the summer cleaning schedules okay. No, I'm done, asking, I'm done asking you questions, Megan. No, you're good. You can ask away. Elizabeth, I know you have a question. Elizabeth. Hey. I find that mute, that hands up. I on my desk. So, this is the best I can do. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, it's okay. I see you. So it's, it works. <laughs> well, you, everyone knows I wanted this 10 years ago. So 
I am so excited and thank you everyone, everyone for who, who's had and just a finger in this. So I may have missed this and I'm just curious. Let's say my son goes to the Catholic school, a uh, private school, but he lives in the district or I live, the parent lives in the district, the child lives in the district. Will they be able to also partake in this or is this just, you know, first round, first time, just the, the kids that are enrolled right now? And then I have another question after that. Yeah, actually, I can answer that. Because we're using ESSER funding that was provided to the school district, there was also additional ESSER funding provided to non-pubs and other schools. So um, based on the funding source, it would be my recommendation to uh, keep it with our students that are enrolled at Keystone Central because other agencies have the opportunity to offer it for their students as well. It's up to them. And the other component to that, I, I agree with what Jackie's saying, is part of the application process um, a parent's going to provide the biographical information of their child, but then what we're going to do with that application is look at the child's academic um, and kind of historical picture of them as a student in the district to determine that our, our neediest students are met, their needs are met first. And so we don't necessarily have data on the students who aren't our Keystone Central School um, students. So we would definitely want to um, prioritize our own students at, at this point. So the other thing that we didn't mention is this is, would be our initial year of offering Keystone Camp. And our goal is to have this run for at least the next two summers as well, using the ESSER funds and stretching them across multiple years. And then our follow-up plan, long-term plan would be when the ESSER funding is no longer available to us or any other funding source that we would apply for the 21st century grant to continue uh, a similar program. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Thank you both for that. That's totally clear. Got it, 100%. Um, uh, two more quick questions. One, I, you always come up with great, you're, you like data as much as I like data. So at some point towards the end or at the end, um, I'd love, we'd all love to see what sort of survey you're going to put out to the, to the children or to the guardians, the parents. Um, and I'll be honest with you, me personally, I, I, knowing myself as a young person, I was fortunate enough to go to camp during the summer and I would get up for camp. I didn't really get up for school too much. Let's <laughs> really say that it was difficult, but when it came to summer camp, I was there at eight o'clock. So I think plus the sun's coming up early. I'm hoping that the kids and the families are gonna jump on that early start. Um, I, I don't see it being a problem. So I'm glad you you stuck with that. Um, yeah, I definitely think Elizabeth will be able to, we are coming up on our spring benchmarking um, period within the district. So we are running both our Ames web and our map spring benchmarking mm -hmm. within the next few weeks across the district. So what's gonna be really interesting to me to watch and I'm sure to you as well, um, we'll call ourselves data geeks, but to compare that spring data to the fall data then that we collect when students start back to school and be able to compare um, sort of that, that difference between our attendees and our non-attendees and just kind of see um, what effects that have because, you know, we all know that the summer impacts student learning. And so um, the goal here is to kind of curb as much of that as possible, but also just provide some consistency to our students because sometimes those summer months come with a lot of inconsistency and uh, not necessarily safe spaces to be at all the time, not necessarily supervised spaces to be all the time. So we're really hoping to get some academic gains, but um, you know, more importantly, just provide a safe space for kids to be this summer. I don't know who this question should go to, whether it's Megan or Jackie or whatever. Um, I see this being very successful with the elementary uh, age group. I'm not sure about um, how you're going to get these, particularly the nine through 12s, uh, how to sell them on it, because they're the guys that probably haven't been doing their work to begin with when they through this school year. It's spoken you know, like a going, true administrator. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, so you've never had any experience with high schoolers, have you? <laughs> just a little. So um, that's a very valid question. And tomorrow, um, Christina Manning and Megan and I have a meeting 
with uh, children and youth and as well as I've talked to Judge Miller, um, some of the students in our area who have had a lot of difficulty during the pandemic with attendance issues and truancy, which has ultimately impacted their credit attainment. Exactly. So we're kind of talking about the same students. And so what we're going to do is work together, um, let them know what our Keystone Camp is about tomorrow so that they can understand and possibly give our local judge um, an opportunity to utilize our camp as a strategy. Very wise move. <laughs> Good strategy. Fourth attendance, never hurts. I'm a little nudge, right? <laughs> Elizabeth, I know you have another question. Last one, I promise. I yeah, promise. I'm going to hold you to it, Elizabeth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know. Okay. Now, I understand we can't mandate, and I understand that. And this is sort of sort of a gray area for a board member to say this, but I really want to ensure the long-term safety of our staff, our kids. Everyone does. Okay, everyone does. Is is there any way since these hires for the camp are going to be under a different circumstance, is it possible to highly recommend, I know we can't use the word mandate, but to highly recommend that everyone is vaccinated if they're gonna be working with our kids? I'm not sure what conversations you've had. I'm not saying this might this may not be the appropriate place, but I hope that conversation comes up somewhere, you know, at some point. I think you're appropriate place, Elizabeth, but I think you're gonna find it would be against the law. Oh, right. I didn't say the word mandate. No, just high. I, no, I, just, I, I know you want to do, and I wholeheartedly think it's a great idea. I just don't think there's any way we could put anything in writing that would facilitate okay. that. Okay. I think you just run into a lot of troubles. Okay. I get it. I got it, but I had to say it, but thank you. Okay. We appreciate it. And if you think of any other questions over the next few weeks, as you see more information out and about, um, feel free to reach out to Leslie or me or Jackie, and um, we would definitely, um, you know, answer your questions and and just work with you to um, get the information out there. So um, we just ask that you spread the word as well. Um, we will be doing our part to spread the word, but um, you also have an active role in our community. So if you can also um, spread the word for us. We would appreciate that. Thank you, Megan. Very nice presentation, ladies. Thank you, Megan and Leslie. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, moving on, we'll go hearing, hearing the visitors. Are there any, Tracy? There are no visitors signed up to speak. All righty. Uh, go to the superintendent's report, Dr. Martin. Thank you. We have been celebrating Teacher Appreciation Week throughout the district. Um, this entire first week of May, even though yesterday was actually Teacher Appreciation Day. Uh, quite honestly, we should be celebrating Teacher Appreciation Year. <laughs> this um, annual event uh, allows us to acknowledge every teacher's commitment to educating and nurturing our most precious resource, which is our children. Uh, to our teachers, please know how much you're valued and appreciated. You took extra steps to keep students and staff safe from the coronavirus pandemic. You've adapted your learning environments to provide options for families to continue learning with us. You focused the needs of, of the students. You focused on the needs of the students. You supported one another in PLCs. You supported our families in many different ways. And you are responsible for shaping the future of our world. And to me, you are American heroes. I'm so proud to serve the Keystone Central community all along with you, our teachers. And because of you, we can make a difference. Thank you again for all you do. I would also like to give a special shout out to Senator Chris Dush and his field rep, Deb Rudy, who helped us secure a $100,000 grant from PDE focused on career education. We successfully obtained the funding that will be used to update equipment in both our cosmetology and culinary arts programs. Uh, Mr. Kurt Lynch, our director, worked with teachers Stacy Klein and Vinny Kishball to determine how to specifically use this money to enhance our current programs. And I think later in the agenda, you'll see a business item uh, contract for some cosmetology equipment upgrades. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to committee reports. Uh, curricular, co-curricular, or anybody here on that committee? Give us a report. Um, I can. Anybody at all? <laughs> Elizabeth was there as, as well. Elizabeth, you want to give us how it went? Uh, well, the minutes, uh, first I want to thank Tracy and everyone who takes the minutes. Um, 
right there in the minutes, and I hate to say, you know, read the minutes, but the highlights, um, I really think, were, for, at least from, from our discussion, I'd say the major discussion was about the facility study. And I, I'm sure Dr. Martin and uh, Rob may go into more detail, uh, Susan, and, and whenever they feel is appropriate. Um, I'm, we were all very, very excited about hearing about the upgrades for the Renova campus. Um, we all know there's been challenges there. Well, there are challenges there. And I wanna say this, I be truly believe everyone in our committee um, sees all of the properties as one. There's not one that's a tier above the other. So, and the group works extremely well together. Um, we may have our differences at time, but these aren't rubber stamper people. They, great discussions. And again, I believe she's done such a beautiful job in the minutes. Um, I, I give all that credit to her. If there's any questions, um, we'd be more than happy to answer them or any concerns at whatever appropriate time you feel. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. We, did, we looked at um, the, the key part of that meeting was really looking at the athletic fields and facilities of upgrades that are the projects that are needed. And I know that some members of the facility committee joined that meeting that evening, as well as um, at our recent finance committee meeting, we shared it with the rest of the board. So there should be very few members of the board who has, have not seen that presentation through a committee um, that's been through three committees. So um, we are, the summary is that we're looking for a company in pricing right now to do a facility, athletics facility feasibility study to determine our priorities in the 10 year facility plan. Yeah, that fast <laughs> I didn't use any acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions? All right, moving on, Jeff, facilities. Well, it kind of overlaps onto what, what you just said. Um, a good part of what the facilities committee talked about, and I guess we were the first ones to see the presentation for the athletic um, uh, options we had. There were like five options that were presented. Um, and I think like, like Jackie said, I think majority of the board has probably seen that presentation. So we looked at five options. We decided on one, the last one where we want to utilize our, our existing uh, facility, mainly at the middle school. And we're, uh, we're recommending uh, that we do a feasibility study to see how we can best utilize those uh, facilities uh, and for the most efficient way we can do. And I know that the facilities committee recommended, uh, highly recommended that we go in that direction rather than doing a separate baseball field or partnering with Mill Hall Borough or uh, LHU or whatever, because there were just too many, too many things there that would be potential problems. So that was our, our main, one of the main topics we talked about. We did talk about a couple of other items there. Uh, we um, mentioned, you'll see on one of the items here tonight uh, for, for approval next week is the installation of the uh, new goalposts up at Bucktail at the, at the football field up there. Uh, they're gonna be doing all the necessary work with getting those installed, re uh, measuring out the field, make sure that it's correctly aligned with it so that the, the football, uh, that, or rather the goalposts are they put in in their exact correct spot. Uh, so that the uh, uh, purchase or the, the cost for that is on here tonight. Also, uh, at our next meeting, I think a group from uh, the Renova area is going to present uh, to us about some pillars from the old 7th Street School that they thought we might be interested in utilizing somehow in the, the Bucktail project. I'm not sure how that's going to happen <laughs> when I looked at the pictures of it, but uh, I guess uh, um, a couple of people from up there uh, are going to be presenting to us. I think Rich Wyckoff and a couple other folks at the next meeting. Also, we talked a little bit about trying to do a um, some kind of a like a similar to our 10 year plan for our equipment, uh, you know, things like mowers and that type of thing. So we can kind of have an idea of, of kind of get on a replacement schedule, so to speak. And we're gonna try to look more at that, uh, putting something together along those lines. And 
this. Um, we also mentioned, I guess, the uh, the Woodward uh, Township thing that Dave asked about an easement. I guess Dave Lindsay's working on that, and hopefully he'll have something for us at the next meeting. And um, that pretty much was it. A couple of reminder things we talked about, but those were the highlights of the meeting. So, Thanks, Jeff. anybody have any questions for Jeff? No. The next meeting is going to be at the end of May twenty fifth, I believe it is. Um, for the committee here. Finance committee, that's, I'm the only one here for that, so I'm it. Uh, as far as the budget, we're on, on goal, on par where we want to be. States funding still, as of the moment, staying the same. I mean, I, I guess I suppose it could drop if our local representative gets no sales tax on weapons. That's more important than, I guess, fixing how education is funded, but that's another story for another time. Okay, uh, other than that, really, there was not, nothing else the 2028 is loaded on tonight's agenda, yes. the, the uh, proposed final budget for vote next week. Okay. Yeah. I think everybody should be proud of the work that's put in by the district employees to get the budget where it's at. They did a really good job. Thank you. And next we'll go to personnel negotiations. Bo. Uh, personnel negotiations did not meet last week uh, due to a lack of agenda items. Uh, which is probably a good thing uh, when it comes down to, to that particular <laughs> committee. Uh, we're scheduled to meet on uh, May 17th, and uh, I don't think we're going to get quite as lucky this month. Okay, thank you. Follows the committee, Wayne. Okay, uh, you'll see on the agenda about approximately 10 items that will be up for first read at our voting meeting. Uh, we uh, discussed those pretty well on the policy committee. If any of you have any questions on any of that, uh, you have between, you know, now and the voting meeting to bring those questions up. Uh, we decided to cancel our, our meeting for May due to the lack of agenda items. Our policies are pretty well up to date. And so our next uh, meeting of the policy committee will take place in August. Other than that, if you have any questions, uh, that's my report. Any questions, Wayne? Wayne keeps us on task. We're ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's right. I do have a, a, an addition for the policy committee and therefore the rest of the board on tonight's agenda with the policy. 709 is on there for first read. However, yesterday I had an opportunity to meet with Mark Kondo uh, as our HR director, as well as safety and security um, act 44 uh, person representative and Ralph Pacella property services. And as we were, what we were meeting about were the administrative regulations to go with that policy. And as we were having our conversations, there were some um, concerns brought up about the access to buildings like full access versus limited access. And what our administrative team would be recommending in the ARs is actually more restrictive access than what's in the policy that's here for first read. So what I would ask is that we probably should pull 709 off of first read um, until we can get some more uh, clarity and we'll run 709 back through the policy committee in August. You're right with that, Wayne? Yes. Thank it you. has to do with keys and access and like actual keys and key cards mm -hmm. and policy logs, but who in the district, what positions would actually have full unlimited access literally to not only in our buildings, but also offices. And so we'd like to, based on the safety and security, and I think Mark would also like to take those recommendations to the safety committee, which we haven't had an opportunity to do. So um, we kind of backtracked after I, I had a conversation with them yesterday. So that's new information for the policy committee. Okay. Any uh, questions? Could I add any, one more thing to my report? Sure, can we? Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Johnson and Mrs. Lynch, Dr. Martin, Ms. Long, Mr. Mark Condo and all the other people with it put input into the policy committee. They do a good job and maybe look good, and that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank, thank you, Wayne. 
Moving on, safety and security, Roger. All right, so we uh, canceled our last meeting due to uh, a lack of agenda items. However, I have a funny feeling we're gonna be meeting this time. Um, <laughs> and well, basically, well, okay. We, uh, the items that we did discuss were uh, basically trying to coordinate school safety and security efforts throughout other schools in our county. So that's basically the big thing that was uh, we were looking at. So, but other than that, that's that's all we can really talk about. Thank you, Roger. Okay, moving on to reports. If I have any question on the treasurer's report, financial reports. And enrollment report, tax claim sale. Can I just mention the enrollment report? The enrollment went up. <laughs> that is a change in what we've been seeing for several years. So I just want to, to call your attention to look at those numbers. Tax claim sale, anybody have any questions on that? Next G, policy, first read. This is 706 property records, 707 use of school facilities, 708 lending of equipment and books, 709 building security, 710 use of facilities by staff, 710.1 authorized use of school policy vehicle, 715 use of fax machines, 716 integrated pest management, 718 service animals in schools, 810.1 school bus drivers, 810.3 school commercial motor vehicle drivers and school vehicle drivers. Anybody have any questions on any of those things? Actually, I have a question as far as uh, policy 707. Fire away, Roger. Um, are we allowing people to utilize the facilities as of yet, or is that still a no-go at this time? Dr. Martin? We have opened up to, I think, one or two groups, but we have not fully opened facility usage. Is that accurate, Mark? I was yes. thinking there was an after school program or two after school programs that are using the facilities, but we have not opened up wide open outside of our own student groups. Well, I, and part of it too is now evaluating the governor's orders, which are to be implemented on May 31st. So we need to take a look at those clearly and make sure that we're able to meet those guidelines for any indoor type activities. Okay. I've been receiving questions about that. So I figure I'd, I'd just ask. Yeah, so. forward, them, forward the, the people making requests, you can forward them on to me. Good enough. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll move on to H minutes. We have the work session minutes, voting meeting minutes, curricular co curricular meeting minutes, special voting meeting minutes, policy committee meeting minutes, facilities committee meeting minutes. I don't know why Tracy took off tonight. Does anybody have any questions on any of those minutes? No? Okay. Next, we move on to business. All right. Bills for payment. Anybody have any questions? Real Estate Resolution 2021-05. Any questions or comments, Susan? I will make a comment that um, what this does, you passed this last year for the first time ever. Um, and what it does is it extends the discount period and it has a zero penalty rate through December for taxpayers. So for a second year in a row, there won't be a penalty if they're paying their real estate bill late. Up until December. Up so, until December. <laughs> thank you. But next year we'll, we'll go back. Yes, the, next year we'll go back schedule. to normal. Yep, the resolution's only good for one year. Any questions on that? Elizabeth, you already had your questions. You kind of used up your quota. I'll, I'll be kind, let you get one more in. Thank you. Uh, um, I'm so sorry. I couldn't click fast enough on the financial report. And I, I realize this is such minutia because seriously, Susan's team on the financials. They're so easy to read, understand, but 
this one just stuck out on me on page 13. Um, Liberty Curtain Electrical for $7.67. I just, I just noticed that. That one just kind of stood out. Is that financial report or bills for payment? Bills for payment, I'm sorry. Oh, I was looking wrong. I'll look into it. Thank you. I'm done. I'll let you know. Any other questions on the real estate resolution? Not proposed final general fund budget. 2021, 2022 20, lunch prices. Any questions? Since they're all free. Yeah. I think we just want to note there that um, everything's free, right? Biden's administration is continuing the seamless summer option, and we would like to continue to participate in that, giving all students free breakfast and, and free, free lunch. lunch right. mm -hmm. Then we have the CIOLA agreement. This is the um, group that we contract with for our virtual academy cur uh, curriculum. And consortium. It's a consortium rate through IU10. They have not raised the rate since they started CIOLA. Um, it's still $15,000 flat rate. And then we pay per student per course. And then uh, within the attachment, you'll see the different rates. I, Justin Evie, who runs our virtual academy, did compare the vendor rates because the individual vendors are able to set their rates annually. Mm -hmm. There may be some small increases, but most of them seem about the same. So not a whole lot different. And we are planning to utilize um, our ESSER funds to pay for the, this piece because it's an allowable expense. Thank you. Clark agreement, questions on that? That's a gold cost. Yep. 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 Pennsylvania College of Technology agreement, Mercy. This is just a renewal of um, a dual enrollment agreement with them that was not on record was discovered. We didn't have it on record or the other one had expired. So we had, uh, we had a request to Art of Business Bid Award. Any questions on that? Any comments? That's the job training grant from um, Lush's office for hmm. part of the cosmetology remodel. In the office equipment, Bucktail Dining Cafeteria Project. 11400 Incorporated Bucktail serve, Serving Cafeteria Project. Nittany Office Equipment, Central Mountain High School Dining Cafeteria Project. Oh, sorry, Elizabeth. I was looking down, <laughs> not, uh, I apologize. Go ahead. No, I'm, so, I'm trying to hit the button quick enough. Um, I'm just asking so hard. Facilities, Dr. Martin, everybody, please, please, for everyone's sake, for the record newspaper, the Express, before and after, maybe even during photographs of these major renovations that you know Rob is is managing, and um, I think that would just be lovely. I mean, yes, you're going to put. I'm sure you'll put things on our web page or Facebook. That's great, but please, please consider putting stuff about this in the newspaper as it gets started over the summer. That's it. Well, that's a good idea. I was thinking the same thing. It'd be nice to do a tour, maybe a media tour or something like that when it's done. Nittany Office Equipment, Central Mountain High School Serving Equipment Cafeteria Project, 11400 Incorporated Serving Equipment Cafeteria Project, Central Mountain High School. Student Activities, Quarter 3. Any questions on that? Repository Sale. Any questions on that? Termin term Terminal. Terminate. Terminate contract. Yeah, geez. Termite contract. Not, <laughs> terminate. not quite. <laughs> Ignore that one. All right. That was discussing. During, I was ex discussing executive session. Curriculum, McGraw Hill, mathematics. We discussed that earlier. Presentation, the price of the program and the books. Personnel. Anybody have any questions with personnel? There's quite a lot going on there. I was just saying, Randy, this. They'll alert the board. There may be an addition or two next week for the voting session. I have a couple of people waiting on paper, paperwork for. So I'll let we'll let the board know. Gotcha. Any additions, but there could be one or two um, on both the personnel and possibly the athletic agenda too. So okay. I just want to give it a heads up on that. No problem. Thank you. Athletics personnel. Any questions on that? 
Central Mountain, Buck, Central Mountain and Bucktail Athletic Booster Summer Fundraisers and Camps for 2021. Anybody have any questions on that? Anybody have anything for the good of the board? Elizabeth, I'm giving you a free one. <laughs> oh, you're wonderful. Um, actually, I'm just going to share some information. This is actually for facilities committee, but I'm afraid if I don't speak it out loud now, I may forget. I, even though I know Jeff, I, I got to email you it and I keep saying it, but I keep forgetting. So um, we have a group here at the Central Mountain um, Middle School here in Mill Hall that um, citizens that use the tennis courts and they're interested in potentially doing some sort of fundraiser or something um, to get some information to, to help pay for new tennis nets. So I just wanna put the radar out there for the next facilities meeting, please. That's it. Otherwise, thank you all so much for everything. Elections coming up again. Have a wonderful well, evening. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Roger, do you have anything? Yeah, can I make a motion? Oh, I bet I know what motion you want to make, and you go right ahead, sir. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Oh, second. Do you have a second? Meeting's over. Adjourned. <laughs>